So you can see because I came from Nigeria. I don't I don't even have a clue about Irish, so I can't. So the other option left for me is to be a teacher in further ed or to be a lecturer in the university. So you can wow. see that the primary school, I can't even go there because I don't have Irish, except I have to go and start from the beginning again to start learning Irish. And then yeah. I have to do my living start in Irish, which I'm like, <laughs> I well, don't have the time. So, not, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of time and a lot of work. Okay. So tell me about early years education in Ireland. What is it all about? Yeah. So... Like early childhood care and education here in Ireland is different from the education sector. It's not part of the education sector here in Ireland. It's a different one. You know, in some states, early childhood is part of their education sector. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's the same in the states. Is it the same in the states? Well, it depends again. But, um, in Baltimore, uh, I'm talking about Baltimore. In Maryland, I used to live in Maryland. In Maryland, the uh, early childhood education, I'm not, I'm going to say like daycare or child care, that before they even get to pre-K or kindergarten, was part of the education department of the state. But when I came to Virginia, I was like, what is going on? Because the um, early child, uh, um, because early childhood is kind of broad, you know, because it goes all the way to like pre-K and I don't want to say early childhood because a broad umbrella, mm -hmm. but for child care and daycare in Virginia, we are part of the Department of Social Services. Ooh. Although that is about to change because okay. um, just yeah, recently they started working on now integrating it into the educational department, like it was in Maryland. And so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's going, it's going, a lot of change is going on now. Like, okay, let's see what's going to happen. It's, uh, it's very interesting about the United States educational system. Every state is autonomous. They do what they, um, you know, what they like. It's like very few times can the federal government influence what the state is doing in their educational system. So that's why when, sometimes when you move from one state to the next, it's a different thing going on. Kind of similar, but there'll be a difference. So we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're staying tuned to see what's going on in Virginia, because now Virginia is, in, is now integrating the child care and um, you know, daycares and all of that. Now they're now trying to integrate it into the educational department. Whereas, which would be good, which would be good yeah. at least. Then it means it's going to be recognized. Oh, and yeah. then hopefully things will and change. Hopefully, more, uh, you know, more professional, you know, yeah. things are probably going to be different because I was wondering why is it under the Department of Social Services? I, I don't know, you know. So they're, they're, they're gradually transitioning now in Virginia. But in Maryland, it was part of the uh, Department of Education. Yeah. So like I was saying, like early childhood here in Ireland, it's different. It has nothing to do with the educational sector. So it's an umbrella, you're on your own, but it's funded by the government. Like in, in early childhood here in Ireland, we have the private, which is mostly like, because of the need of parents going to work, parents going into colleges, doing other things, there's a need for private early childhood, much more than the community, the government wants, because we only have, we don't really have many government run early childhood here in Ireland. So you can see that the needs of parents are wide. So that's why you see we have the private, then we have the, the government one. So like the government ones are mainly funded by the government. And when you go to the government one, wow, 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 wow. The government, they really invest into it. Different ah. things. We have the family war, just like you have in yours as well. You know, it, it's, it's huge because it's being run. You know, the government are in charge. But having said that as well, the government still support the private sector, but the private sector still expects much more from the government that the government should um, support them. Okay, so, like in, support, yeah. so like in early childhood in Ireland, we have like a clear based. So you have the opportunity to decide, like if I decide, for instance, I decide that I want to start my own early childhood um, setting here in Ireland, I have to decide what do I value? 
So it's up to you to decide if you want to run like a play based, if you want to run like Montessori, if you want oh. to run like Ninra, Ninra, which is the Irish one. So the government will not tell you to say, oh, like Florence, okay, I want you to run a play based. I want you to run an outdoor play. Oh, so it's going to be all about your own value. So what do you value in relation to early childhood? Like for, for instance, somebody like me now, I really value play. So if yeah. I want to decide, like I want to start, it's going to be a play based, you know. Yeah. So yeah. like here you decide, okay, you want to start, you decide what you're going to do, you're setting, you have everything. And before you start, Tusla needs to come in to check, to make sure that everything is okay. Before here in Ireland, you can start and then inform Tusla. Tusla is the body that is in charge of early childhood here in Ireland. Okay, you can start and then you inform them. They can come and tell you, okay, fix this, fix this, fix this. But now you can't start before them. Mm. Tusla needs to come in. They need to come and inspect everything, your room layout, your outdoor space. So if there's anything that they would like you to fix, you have to fix it before the children will resume. Mm. And also before you start, you have to do a publication with the newspaper just to make sure that nobody has anything. They are okay with the space that you want to use. So there are lots of things that you have to do when you want to start, you know, a childcare setting here in Ireland. So but like early childhood here in Ireland is we have the private, we have the government. So like I said, like it depends on the curriculum that you want to run yourself. And then there's a huge change here in Ireland because and I don't know if you've known or you've had. <laughs> Ireland is part of or one of the countries that the childcare cost is expensive. Mm. Yeah, it's very expensive. Yeah, actually, like if you like, like let's say as a parent now, if I want to have the love of a childcare for my child, if I go to the 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 government one, they give like you could get like subsidy. You know, you yeah. can get like discounts. Yeah. yeah subsidy based on your maybe like if you have a medical card if you're on social welfare and all that but if you're a parent if you're working if you want to send your child to a private setting you'll be paying more how to pay yeah yeah you're paying more and sometimes you see like if, if it's two parents you would have to see one will have to sacrifice for the other or they might both of them might end up working part-time, part-time. Maybe like if you have a young child, maybe the first one will decide to go to work. Okay, let me start from nine to four or nine yeah. to five. Then you can start a night shift. Maybe you start your work from eight because it doesn't worth it. So expensive. So yeah. because it's, you will just look at it like you're just paying for childcare. Yeah. Because for instance, let's say if you have a child, like I don't know how much childcare cost now in Ireland because there was one time it was like for one child you end up paying 180 euros hmm. so if you pay 180 euros a week from Monday to Friday okay and uh, then say, a child now let's look at it this way 180 euros and then you're going to work you're earning 350 yeah. let's say you're earning 350 per week that's why you see most of the people here that they have children and they're working in another child if you see them they go part-time yeah, yeah, wow. Like I said earlier, if you look at early child, let's say you're working, you're getting twelve, you're getting paid twelve euro an hour. So let's say you're getting paid twelve euro an hour and you're working forty hours. So you might even end up getting let's say three hundred and eighty euros per week. So let's hmm. say if you end up getting three hundred and eighty euros per week and you're sending your child to a trike one eighty, so you'll be left with two hundred euros. Ah. And there's a lot to do. There's food. There's gas exactly. and electric. Yeah. So yeah. look at it from 200 euros how are you going to even live yeah. like you're going to pay for it for your house so if you're renting you're going to pay every month so that's why you see most people they end up going part-time that they are working in early childhood because i've seen most of the time when i have discussions with my students me you don't want it because they pay or because they want to remain in early childhood so yeah. from talking to you it's not even i think if you end up staying in early childhood it's just because you have the passion for it that's it's all. not because of the money. Because when money. you look at the money, it doesn't worth it. Yeah. But because yeah. of your passion, you are yeah. there for a change. And you yeah. look at the end, you look at it like you see how the student, like in the next few years, you see them, they are adults. They can still remember yeah. you. You yeah. know, like you, you, you're influencing positively the lives of young children. They look, it's just the same thing with teaching as well. Like you yeah. I teach them, they go their way. Many years back, they are what they are, and they see me, they're like, oh, Florence, we're so grateful, yeah. you know, the way you taught us and all that. So it's it's really rewarding for you. 
And yeah. this is one thing I always say to people, like, if you're in the area of early childhood, it's just that you love it. It's not, you're not there for the pain. Not, not because, the pain. because the pain is not really encouraging, but you're there yeah. for the passion. It's something that you love to do. And that's why you see, you see people that they are working in the area of early childhood. It's because of the passion. They are staying for that longer period of time. You see some people there 40 years, 25 years. Yeah. It's not because of the money. Like I had one of my students that recently finished uh, with me. She's been working in the same place for 40 years. Wow. Can you imagine? Four, zero, 40 years. <laughs> I'm telling you. And yeah. she, said, she said when she went, initially, she was to be there for like a week just to see if she likes it. And one week turned 40 years for her. So I was just having a discussion with her. She was like, parents, it's not because of the pay. It's because of the passion that she loves the children coming in every morning. That even sometimes when she's sick, if she doesn't go to work, she will still feel the need that she has to go. Because yeah. it's what she's used. You know, she's yeah. already used to it already. So it, it's rewarding. Like early childhood is, is, is rewarding. But it's just that the pay. But hopefully, you know, things will change. To get better. And, and it's, it's, it's strange that you say that. Because on the part of the parents, we're paying a lot of money for daycare. This is so expensive, you know? But on the part of the teachers, the early childhood provider is not a lot of money. So it's I don't know, there's a discrepancy between, you know, between those two extremes. The parent is thinking, I'm paying a lot of money to the child. And they are. They are genuinely paying a lot of yeah. money. Yeah. And then, and then to the child care provider, it's not enough. It's a lot of work, you know. Mm -hmm. If you actually want to do uh, an early childhood program, it's a lot of work. It's not. This is not just let me drop my child off and come mm -hmm. back and pick up and make sure they're safe and all of that. It's, it's um, and you can see it on my channel. It's an entire thing. It's the food mm -hmm. they eat. It's mm -hmm. how they play. It's the equipment you're buying. It's the repairs you're making because kids are very um. In, I'm gonna. I don't know the word to use. Rough. They they just play. They don't care if you're gonna paint your wall tomorrow. Exactly. Or, <laughs> you know, they just play. So it's exactly. a lot of wear and tear. It's a it lot is. of expenses on the child care provider, it and is. yet we understand it's a lot of expenses on the parents. So reaching that um that middle ground is is very hard. Yeah. Very I hard. remember. I remember in Ireland a few years back. It just changed recently. They used to refer it as child care. You know, you see people say, oh, I'm doing a course in child care. Okay. I'm doing a degree in child care. But yeah. it's all changed now. It's early childhood care and education. Just like what you said, it's not just the caring part. But you oh. see people, they only see the caring part. What are you yeah. doing? You're changing nappy. You're uh, feeding. They're just babies. They're... They don't need to know numbers or letters, you know. But, but they do. You have to be exactly. And then you need to consider, you need to consider like the learning part, the teaching part. You're yeah. teaching the student other skills. Okay. It's not just only feeding them. It's not just only changing their nappy. So like okay. it takes a while for people to change the narrative. And it's yeah. also coming to parents as well. You know, you see parents say, oh, I'm paying much. You know, not many parents will understand that. Okay. The crucial early childhood is crucial. You're dropping your children. Be mindful of the people you're dropping your children. Okay, are they going to be able to provide you with quality services? That's why you see people, when the parent, when they look at the cost, they just look at it and say, well, I think I would prefer to have a child minder that I'm going to pay lesser yeah, yeah. than, yeah. you know, saying I'm going to go and pay that one. Oh, let me give my child to grandma, you know, yeah. maybe grandma, you know. But, but if you can find a very good program, mm -hmm. to put your baby. Sometimes you can even start with the babies. Exactly. Babies, there, there are programs, they can do sense to read, you know, mm -hmm. they can learn rhymes, they can learn, you can read to them. These are things that, because parents are busy and they are working, they're very busy, they may not have time to do that on a consistent level. You know? Exactly. And you also need to understand that, you just spoke about babies, now look at it. How many parents really even understand that? Yeah. You have a baby, baby. or babies, they are yeah. learning. Yeah. They look at it this way. If you look at one of the YouTube clip, my YouTube clip that I did, they look at babies, they can't talk, they can't yeah. hear. So who have that mentality, that mindset that, okay, yeah, they are learning. They are yeah. babies. Oh, let me just drop yeah. them with somebody let's, else. Let's, till they get to five years. Let's, let's, let's leave them till they get to six. And then, you know, but by the time they get to five or six and they are ready for school, 
they're going to be behind, unfortunately. Exactly. So like I was saying earlier, then here in Ireland, like in 2010, the, it, uh, the government introduced a scheme called the uh, Early Childhood Care and Education Scheme. So it's called the ECC scheme, so which is free. So if your child is two years, eight months, till five years and six months, mm -hmm. you as the parents, you can avail of free preschool for your child. So it's wow. three hours, three hours a day. So it's Monday to Friday and it's 38 weeks. So the program is from September to June. Wow. So it's got the free preschool year, the ECC scheme. So let's say, for instance, that if my child is two years and eight months, I can yeah. pick up a form. But you need to apply before your child turns that way. So you pick up the form, you fill it out, and then my child can go for three hours a day. That's like three times five. So that's 15 hours a week. And the government, they are going to pay for it. But now let's look at it this way. It's expensive aid. So does that mean that parents will have to stay on to two years and eight months before they send their they, child into? Yeah, yeah. See? You know, and you don't blame some people. They have, they, they do with generally, because when you look at it with cost as well, it doesn't, you know, like let's say for instance, if the parents are not working, they look at it. And this is generally, and like I said, Ella, my thinking has changed because I'm in the area of early childhood. As I mean, yeah. I'm not, let, let's remove sentiment now, Dr. Brenda and myself. As I mean, we are not in the same sector. We'll be like everybody else. Yeah. We'll be like it and say, well, I'm at home. Like, no. for instance, now, if you have a two, you know, the father, the mother, they are not working, they are at home, they are not doing anything. It takes, you know, it takes somebody yeah. to say, okay, yeah, let me just put my child in a childcare setting. I'm going yeah. to be paying. I just want my child to go there to learn. It doesn't work that way. They are going to say to you, "Well, I will train my child at home until when my child turns two years and eight months in Ireland here yeah, before they, they can go." They don't know how to be sociable. They exactly. want to fight for everything. You know, exactly. They don't learn those skills. Exactly. Uh, I, I've seen some parents here, Florence, when when they're bringing their child for enrollment, maybe their child is like two and a half, maybe three. They say. Miss Brenda, my child is very nice. They've not been to daycare before. They are very nice. They, um, you will like them. And I'm like, they are nice. I, and I understand they are. But we don't know yet. If you put them in exactly. a group of six other children, how that's they when you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when you know. And that's the social skills. That's what exactly. they need to learn in, mm -hmm. um, in the preschool environment before they, before they get jumped into kindergarten exactly kindergarten. nope you hardly exactly. have time for all of that you're exactly. learning now for yeah. exams and stuff you know and That's it's so been proven, it's been proven many times that children that went to preschool when they move on to primary school they are sociable you see they these ready. children they're ready yeah. you see yeah. them they just go with the flow they interact but whereas you see some children that they are just starting primary school they are withdrawn because they yeah. don't know how to socialize. It's not, yeah. it's like the first time they are leaving their home. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's it's also important that, you know, we need to go out there and change the narrative. You know, at least you have a channel, I have a, a channel as well. These are the things we need to go out there and start telling, telling the story. Hopefully one day we will get there. Let's not yeah. just look at it and say, oh, people are not really watching our content. We have yeah. valuable content that people are not watching. They will definitely watch it yeah. because they need to know it's a sacrifice. You need to make that sacrifice. And then in the end, you're going to see the sacrifice pays off. I know cost is a barrier as well. Like you can't tell somebody that can't afford it and say to them like, oh, yes, you need to bring your child to early childhood. Your child needs to go to daycare. They're going to tell you, parents, yeah. where am I going to see the money from? But, you know, like for Ireland now, I'm so grateful. Like here in Ireland, you know, from two years, eight months to five years and six months, children can get three hours a day, you know, 15 hours a week of free preschool year, which is good, all paid for by the government, which is very, because before 20, 2010, yeah, in Ireland, they used to give, like parents, they give them a thousand euros. I think it's every four, four months or three months, they give them that a thousand euros for them to go and put their child in early childhood. But you find out not many parents are availing of it. You know, like I said, if they're just at home, they will look at it. Well, why will I bring my... But actually, the government paid them that money to put their child into a, a preschool. But they look at it, well, I'm at home. <laughs> I will not put my child, my child. Even then, you see some of them, they are doing courses then. They are paying them. They pay them. They pay money into their account to put their child into a preschool. But, mm -hmm. you know, 
They don't want to do it. They just get somebody to come and stay with their children at home. They pay the person and then they can. But then, you know, like with the government initiative now, before when it started in 2010, it was just only one year. So with the research, the government saw that, yes, early childhood is really beneficial. So it's not increased to two years now. So here in Ireland, your child can get two years of free preschool without you paying nothing. All you just have to do is get your child ready in the morning. It's from 9 to 12. Oh. All you just have to do is get your child ready and you have the choice to decide. So let's ah. say for instance, now for somebody like me that maybe like I have a background in early childhood, at least I know we have the Montessori, we have the play base, we have the Nina. I can decide which one I want to send my child to. But you see, parents, they just, anyone that's available that is closer to their home, they just go and avail it. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, which yeah. is good, which yeah. is on the other hand is good. At least here now, the children can go like three hours, you know, avail of preschool, you know, learn to meet with other children as well. Because this is good for our children as well. It's good for the children to go out there to go and socialize, you know, meet with other children. It's yeah. good for their mental health. Yeah. yeah. The same with adult ad, adult as well. If you're at home, you're in the same place from Monday to Sunday. How are you going to feel? You yeah. you you yeah. going to go. Yeah, you want to go out and explore. You just want to go out and say, if it means you're going out for fresh air, at least if it's once in a week or two times in a week, at least you're out there, you're able to get that fresh air, you're able yeah. to come back and then refreshed as well. So, yeah, so that's just um all about the early childhood sector here in Ireland. Okay, so let's just say I just got out of high school and um, or college, you know, how do I become an early childhood professional in Ireland? Oh, yeah. So for you to be an early childhood professional here in Ireland, you need to have a minimum qualification QQI level 5 in early childhood. So before then in Ireland, you can decide, like, you just finish your living cert, like your school cert. You can decide to go and work in a crash. You don't even need any qualification there. They just take you. Maybe there's a job opening. You just go and apply. They like your personality off you go well it has changed now you need to have a minimum level five and for you to be a room leader here in ireland if you want to be a room leader like for you to be in charge you know like the room leaders are the people in charge you know the person in charge you're the one in charge yeah the room so for you to be a room leader here in ireland it says you need to have a level six in early childhood but i haven't said that you need to have a level six most of the places here in Ireland, if not all the places, they're advertising for somebody that has a degree in early childhood to be the room leader. And ask me why. Hmm. Why? <laughs> okay. Okay. The reason is the government pays much money for so, somebody that has a degree. Oh, okay. yeah. They pay okay. a higher capitation. So like the ECC scheme, the government pays a money for the child. So, like I said, the, the program that the government are providing two years free of charge, the government pays you for providing that services. It's not that the government just, okay, bring your child and that's it. No, the government pays you. Okay. Oh, wow. They pay you per child. Wow. Okay. So, per child, I think it's six to seven euros or something per child. Okay. And then if you have a degree, let's say I'm being employed. Okay. Let's say like you have a childcare care center now, you have a, a preschool vendor and you employed me because I have a degree in early childhood. So, yeah. for every other, for each child, the government will pay me 73 euros. So, subtract wow. 73 from six to seven. Wow. So, you can see the setting will oh, get much more money because I have a degree. So most of the jobs out there now, they're looking for, you need to have a degree in early childhood because they know that the government pays them higher capitation, more, more money. But just like what you said, like you run a, a setting in the state, you know, it's a privately run. You see that most of this private setting, they're looking for how they can be able to make at least extra bit of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's when you look at it, because when you look at it, yeah, yeah, because when you look at it, by the time they parent, you know, I'm that kind of person that have that mindset before that, oh, private sectors, they have money, they are getting paid. But just like what you said, by the time you pay your rent, you pay other things, you and yeah. you have to pay staff, you have to pay for people that yeah. are working, you end up that the money you're left with is a lot of money. It's just yeah. it's just the name. You'll be like, Oh, she's the manager, she yeah. owns the, the business, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you just look at it, but you don't know that the other things that you have to and most of the times, you even see some of these people that own the setting, they end up like saying 
It's just that they want to do it because of the passion. Okay. Because they prefer that instead of them going to work for people, they prefer just like, and I think it's the same thing as yourself, like especially for yourself, man, you'd be like, okay, how can you with a, a doctor in GB, they're working for people. You'd be yeah. like, well, the best thing is for you to just have your own, yeah, be in charge. Yeah. So That's like funny. I said, so for you to start, if you want to uh, work in early childhood, you need to have a minimum level five. And then from there, you can work your way to the top. You can do the level six, you can do the degree, you can do your master's, and then you can decide that you want to do a PhD in early childhood. If you feel that, you know, like, for example, you know yourself, if you're doing a PhD, there must be a change. You're doing yeah. it for a reason. You're not just saying, oh, you want to do a PhD because you want to do it. You are going to make an impact. Uh, yeah, yeah. There must be a reason. You know, it's not just, let me go study. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And you have to look at it just like what you said. It has to be something, you, you know, even, a, and I know you can resonate with what I'm about to say. Even though you're saying, oh, you're there for a change, you want to do for four years, you to get to two years, three years, you're tired already. It's not even two years, it's every time you're tired because it's a yeah. long journey. You're on this journey yourself. Nobody, yeah. like, even though I know you have yours, if I'm telling you, oh, you're going to say, oh, Florence, it's all about your work. You have to go and do it yourself. Even with the supervisors, like, oh, you're in charge. You have to own your own. Yeah. Yes, own so own. it's a yeah. long journey. But then when you look at it, why are you doing it? Okay, yeah. you're doing it for a reason. So that reason that will keep you going, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I have to keep going because of the passion, because of the change that I want to see, and because of your own professional development as well. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to the next one. This is a, a major thing, COVID-19 pandemic. You know that all over the world, COVID came and it impacted a lot of aspects of the world. Even in the United States, in the, in the educational sector, it impacted it a lot. I mean, maybe probably not as much as other countries, but it did impact it a lot. For instance, when, um, when schools were closed and schools had to reopen as virtual, not as face-to-face -face anymore, you know? So the, um, the child, let's say a parent had like five children, for instance, five kids, they have to have five computers. Mom and dad were working from home. They have to have computers. You have to have the internet service, you know? So it, it was hard because yes. not everybody can afford to do that. And okay. you know, yeah, even in a, a developed country like the US, mm -hmm. there were some stories that we were seeing on the news where some children had to go to like the, um, the mall, um, barber shops, um, coffee shops, just to get access to the internet mm -hmm. so they can do their school, you know? So um, how in, in, um, in Ireland, how did COVID-19 impact your educational system? Mm -hmm. I must start by saying it really changed everything. It really changed the education system. It really changed our mindset. You know, before COVID, we're used to online. We're going into the classroom. It's affected yeah. everywhere, early childhood, primary school, secondary, the university, yeah. because like All for, for, for a whole year now, we're at home. And yeah. I think it's one and a half years we've been home now, like for the third level. Everything has been moved online. So yeah. it's changed. And just like what you said, like there are some children in primary school, in secondary school, like they don't have access to a computer. Okay. So our government here in Ireland, they really tried. You know, when the COVID started, they they they, they gave huge sum of money to buy computers, you know, like for the children that can't afford the computer. Like I know of third level because I'm speaking for the third level like I know. So they, they have the computer. So if you're one of the students that you need like a laptop, so you can get one from the college, but it's on loan. When you finish, you're going to return it back. It's not, oh, the college is giving me laptop for four years after oh, my college, I can have it. Have to return it. Because, yeah, because everything changed online. But you see some children like in secondary school, they can't, like I know some, that they can't even participate as well when everything was moved online because they don't have access to computer, they don't have access to internet services. So there's no way it's possible for them. So it actually changed everything. It changed the narrative, you know, it brought, you know, learning online. So everything was moved online. Like even me as a teacher, I'm going to confess, one time I was so tired because I have three kids. 
Oh, wow. I've one in I've one in secondary school. I've the other two in primary school. So navigating like it's a busy. That's a lot of work. Yes, the house is busy, and I also I'm doing my PhD work as well. So at some point I have to with my two boys. I have to, and luckily for me, I got a laptop off work as well. So my work gave me a laptop because I was wow. working from home. So wow. it helped me. I gave my laptop to my daughter, and then my two boys. Anytime because like primary school here in Ireland. They were meeting online once in a week. So it was once in a week. So mine was like Thursday. So with the teacher, they always meet like I think an hour every Thursday. Other than that, they have to do their work online. So they assign them work to do. So when they do it, they correct it and send it to the teacher online. And then the teacher can correct. But secondary school is every day. Hmm. So the secondary school is still it's the secondary school is still like they are still going to school, but everything is online. So they still start their class at 8 40. You know, wow. every other time the normal time they finish 3 40, 3 wow. o'clock. They, they still continue all day, they still continue. Everything just continued like that. So, like, you know, with the old pandemic, it actually changed our mindset. Wow. Learning could be done in the comfort of your own. So now let's start with the advantages. Now I know it has disadvantages as well. So like in terms of the advantages, you know, you're you know, you you're in the comfort of your home, you know, especially if you're in third level, you don't have to turn your camera on. Or if you're teaching, like I have to turn my camera on because I'm the one teaching, so I can't be in my PJ and say, oh yeah, I'm teaching. So but you know, you're relaxed. It saves the time of you having to drive to work. Okay, so let's say you're work you're working 30 minutes away from home. So 30 minutes to and four is like an hour. So which you can just turn on your computer 10 or 15 minutes to your your teaching will start or your lecture will start, and then you're good to go. So but for early childhood, okay, so for early childhood during the COVID, you know, the educators were sending worksheets to children at home. Oh. You know, they were sending worksheets, you know, things that they want the children to do, coloring, painting, and all that. And they were calling, you know, calling with the parents, calling yeah. the parents to make sure that, you know, the children are fine. But it's been a, a lonely journey. It's affected the social interactions. You know, yeah. even now that we still have the two meter apart. So you see the children when they want to play now, everything now moved to, they now have their, I'm trying to remember this word. Social distancing. So yeah, social distancing. And the children now go in in court. So let's say the some will go in at 8 50, or they will yeah. give 10 minutes for the others for them to settle. And then you see the next we go in at nine, nine o'clock. So the interaction yeah. has changed. So, like for the for the third level now, everything is still online. So yeah. we are hoping we're going back in September, the whole year from 2020 to 2021 was online, but the primary uh -huh. school went back. The primary school went back in April. So there was a time that it was closed before, it was open before Easter. And then uh, when the Easter holiday, it was closed for, it was supposed to close for two weeks. It ended up closing for three weeks to give more time to see if the cases are going to go down. But mm. they went back, you know, so now they're on holiday. But the cases are increasing every day. So I'm just hopeful that we'll be able to go back, like even for third level for myself. I just want to, like in my college, I want, especially like if you're doing a PhD, it's a lonely journey. You just want to go to the college. At yeah. least just for me to just go to the college and see, talk to people. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. at least I'll be able to see some of my students. At least I'll be, you know, everything with the back. You will be yeah. that happy that at least you're in. It, it, it doesn't mean even if, because they're looking at it to say, I don't think it's going to return back to Monday to Friday. Maybe it's going to be two times or three times in a week. So the lectures, they're saying the lectures could, is going to be moved online, but the tutorials will come in for your tutorials. You know, the tutorial is always in smaller groups. So maybe 20 at a time. So we are hopeful now. We're still waiting. We've not had anything about like the third levels. I'm talking about the third level now. We've not had anything. But like the secondary school, they are going back end of August and the primary school as well, they are going back end of August. So it's like I was saying, it has really changed. So it has changed. Like, look at it now. That was the time I started my YouTube channel. It was during the pandemic. I think you've started way back before my yeah, before the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. So I started in April. You know, the pandemic. I was just sitting down at home. A friend of mine just sent me a, a, a clip. She started a YouTube channel. I was like, "Well, if this person can do it, let me do it too." Yeah. I, I can do it. I just started. 
you know, just brought my camera. <laughs> I just started and that is it, you know, the, the story has changed today. So like in terms of the pandemic, it has actually impacted like some, like I said, some children were not able to access learning online because they don't have access to laptop. Some is even the network, you know, some are living in the villages that the network is not great. Oh, so okay, those, yeah. yeah, so those children really missed out a lot. Like yeah. this year now in Ireland, the junior start was cancelled. There was no junior start done, it was cancelled, but the Living Start went ahead. Last year, Living Start and Junior Start were cancelled. Wow. So there were no Living Start. So it was the teacher. So they call it an in house grade. So it was the teachers that would give the grade to the child, and then the child would use it to progress to third level. You see, some students, some students even went back to say they want to do their Living Start again this year. They went back to the same school to say, no, they are not going further into the university. They want to have that opportunity to do their living. So the, the COVID really affected a lot of things. But then we also look at the, the positive aspect, you know, like learning could continue online in the comfort of your home, just that you're missing your teacher. You can't really see your teacher. You can't really see your friends, but you can still move on with what you're doing online. Yeah, I don't know. So what about now? Do you are the vaccines out in Ireland? Are people taking the vaccines? Uh, did they have like the mask? Are, are they wearing masks at school? Yeah, like what? for primary school now, mask is not compulsory, but for secondary school, it's compulsory. So like the primary school, you don't have to wear your mask because I think they said like young children, because they are still young, they can't really, I don't know, maybe they can't really catch it or they are not prone to catch it or something. But secondary school, because they are moving around, you know, like here in Ireland, the secondary school is from, you're going from one class to another. So let's say you have a class from 8.50 to 9.30, then you move to another class. So you're moving. Uh, uh, moving constantly, yeah, yeah. So for secondary school, mask is compulsory. But like yeah. I said, like third level, we've not really had the opportunity to be in class. So everything has been online. So for secondary school, the mask is compulsory. For primary school, you don't have to. And the, ma the vaccine, yeah, like I've taken my two oh, shots yeah. of vaccine now. So I've taken okay. mine. I took the first one and the second one. So it's ruled out now. So at the moment, it's for two things from 18 to 24 now. Yeah. So you have to yeah. apply, you know, let your doctor know that you want to take yours and then they can give it to you. So the vaccines are ruled out. But even though we have the vaccines, you still have to wear your face mask. Yeah, yeah. Compared to the UK, and I think in UK, you don't have to wear your face mask now. You can do whatever. And even the cases are still rising. I don't know yeah. why they don't have to wear their face mask. They can do whatever they want to do. But here in Ireland, you still have to wear your face mask. You still have to maintain your social distance and things has not changed. Even though you have your vaccine, it doesn't mean you go out, you don't wear your face mask. You're, you're still, you still have to maintain all the health precautions. Some people who've had the vaccines, they still catch COVID. So yeah. The only thing it makes it less, um, it, the impact of COVID on your body, if you've taken the vaccine, makes it, it's not as bad as if you mm -hmm. haven't taken the vaccine. So, you know, it's the uh, same thing here too. The vaccines are out. Some states, um, I think it was um, like in Los Angeles just recently, they said no mask, people can do what they like, just move around. And then COVID, COVID cases rose and then they came back. I said, please put on your mask, you know. So COVID is not on yet. It's, it's not, COVID. it's not, it's not. Yeah. And this is what I say to people, it's like, it's the new norm. Like everybody is saying, COVID is the new norm. We just have to adjust it. It's just like the yeah. same way with malaria in Africa, you know, in yeah. Nigeria. We still have our malaria. All we just have to do is, you know, we are take your malaria injections and it's not gone. So the yeah. same thing with the COVID is going to be there, but it's just like, we have to just maintain what we have to do. We can't say, oh, because of COVID now, we can't do things that you have to do, meet up with friends, go shopping, but you just have to take the, so, you know, the precautions, yeah. Ah. So how, what about school funding? Because, you know, school funding is a very important aspect of education. Like in the United States, schools are funded either by private sectors or by the government grants and loans and all of that, especially during the COVID period, the government rolled out a lot of grants to help little small businesses, to help the educational sector, you know, with, um, with the economic problems that COVID brought with it. But even before COVID, the government was funding education, um, private enterprises, non-NGOs, uh, you know, um, different organizations are funding education in the United States. So what about in Ireland? How is education 
funded. Yes, yeah, so like in Ireland, in terms of education, it's mostly funded by the Department of Education. So the department, but Avon said that we still have the private schools. So the private schools, we have the missionary schools, we have the schools that are being run by the sisters, the brothers. So it's mainly funded by those people. But Ireland, you know, is mostly funded by the Department of Education. So the Department of Education, we have many schools here in Ireland that they are being run and managed by the Department of Education. And we have the private run schools as well that they are run by a group of people. So they are the ones in charge, they are running there. And we also have the, the Catholic sisters that they, they have their schools, you know, the brothers that they have their schools as well. But mostly schools are funded by the Department of Education here in Ireland. Wow, okay. So um, what what major elements would you say have contributed to the growth of education in Ireland? Mm. So I'm going to say is, like, like I said, it's the investment of the government. You know that the government they are really investing into education because like in Ireland they are, they are so keen passionate about education you know and as you know education is the key you get education you're being enlightened you gain knowledge and you pass this knowledge on to others so I would say it's the government they are really investing they are non-stopping non-stop they are building schools you know infrastructures and schools like you know like the science and other things they are really invested and I'm going to say